Hello folks, and I welcome you to this new chapter where we'll be focusing mostly on variables, the data types, the reserve keywords, and we'll also look at the JavaScript syntaxes. So let's not waste our time and let's start from here. We wrote a code that we named as the first code.js and we declared a variable, we assigned a value to it, and then we printed that variables value on the browser and we have seen how these browsers react when we want to print a JavaScript code. So let us now analyze what this variable is, how this works and why is it so important in the programming world. So we created a variable that we named as the first variable. This variable holds a string value of this is my first variable initialization. So what we are doing in here is that we are telling the compiler, the Mr. Compiler, we are going to declare a variable with this name. This is in programming's perspective, this is known as the identifier. So the names that we assign to the variables or the storage systems. Variables are generally a storage system in the computer's memory. So when we name them, they're uh, officially in programming world known as the identifier. This is also true for functions and many other things, but we'll discuss about those later on. Let us now focus how this is structured. So this var is actually a keyword. This var is a reserved word in programming's con perspective in JavaScript. So what this, why this is reserved? Because this, when we write this, you can actually see that the uh, editor is changing the color of this var keyword. So when this color change occurs, it means this is part of the core programming. But other than that, these are the programmer's defined identifiers. So we know that we first need to form a complete s expression, a complete statement, sorry. A complete statement means, in programming's perspective, a complete sentence. So, suppose we say that I live in, uh, suppose I live in my house. Uh, this is actually an English sentence. This is a complete sentence. So. In human language, this is known as the complete sentence, but in programming's perspective, when we want to write a complete sentence, it is known as a statement. So this entire thing, this entire thing, along with the semicolon that we placed at the end, is known as a statement in programming. So when you write a complete statement or a complete, s uh, a complete sentence in programming, you need to include this a semicolon at the end of that statement so that the compiler can understand that we are going to end this expression and this is going to form as a statement. So there is a general difference between statement and, and expressions in programming. Expression as we can always refer it from our human terms is an incomplete sentence. It, it has phrases but it's not a complete sentence. But when we want to refer to a complete sentence we say it as a statement. So what we have learned is that we need to declare a variable using the var keyword so that the compiler can understand that we are going to declare a new variable that will hold a certain value. Now first, after we named it, we named it using the first variable and this has been initialized. So the first part is called declaration or variable declaration. This entire part is known as variable declaration. So what this is telling, this is telling the computer that we need to assign a memory inside the computer's memory uh, inside the computer's uh, storage system so that we can store a certain number of value or a certain value inside it whether it be string or we can also assign a number, a uh, random number and store it inside this variable. So suppose we go on and we just write var first variable in our compiler and we end the statement here. So what this does, this actually declares the variable but this variable is empty. What we mean by declaration is that we tell the com computer that you need to separate a s uh, you need to keep a separate memory for us to store a value inside but we're not going to store it right now. 
So when we assign a value immediately to this variable, we are actually telling the computer's memory that assign this memory for us and store this entire thing inside that memory. So when we tell the uh, computer that we want to store this value, we actually mean initialize this value for this variable. So this is known as variable initialization. So this initialization means that when we assign a value to our variable, we are initializing it. So in here, when we say that we are declaring a variable, we are and we are not initializing it. It means it will have it will also have a value, but that is actually not regarded as a value in programming. So that is is known as undefined. This first variable, when we don't initialize it with a former uh, f formal value when we don't want and initialize it with a formal value it holds this undefined value although it's not value in programming context it's known as value to and it's assigned to this empty variable which tells the computer's memory that don't store anything yet so here we are and uh, this the first part we have learned that this is called the declaration this is the identifier and this is the initialization. So there's another part to this variable. Let me just show you. Now we can actually go on using the same single var keyword to declare two or more variables in one go. So how do we do it? First, let me just create two new variables, but you can go on cre uh, declaring several variables in one single line. So let me name them as second var and third word. You can also go on and uh, create or declare two more other variables or four more other variables but try to be concise with your declarations if you do not want to initialize them at the initial stage. So uh, let's end this statement and let's save this. So the difference between us the programmer and the compiler is that the compiler would actually see them separately. They w it wouldn't see as if it's going to be reading a single variable but it's going to see that uh, var second var and var third var this is how the compiler is going to read so another important aspect of declaring a variable at an initial stage is that if you go on declaring the variable at this very first stage and you assign a value later on to this variable or initialize it later on then it actually takes up more space than a uh, declaration and an initialization in w one single line but it's also important in some programs when you create an application in, in several of your web projects that you might come across times when you need to keep a variable empty so you need to keep that variable empty in the in the sense that you need to fill that variable later on in your program suppose you need to use that variable to change its contents dynamically through looping through using a function or any other uh, syntaxes of JavaScript so we'll be talking about functions and the looping processes later on in our series but let's assume that we have some idea about looping so suppose we take we have already declared this variable called third var and it holds the undefined this undefined means it's empty and it's not going to store anything inside the computer's memory but later on we have uh, we have the intention to create a loop that will uh, systematically store the value from 1 to 10 and it will be produced or displayed on a web browser so what happens is that it initially starts by 1 then it erases that one and it overwrites by two then again it goes on uh, overwriting that two with three and it continues until the value of ten is reached so this dynamic change means that we need to keep our variable empty or uninitialized so it's important to know what we're going to do with our variable uh, at a very first stage when we want to create a program for our web projects now there is another aspect of variable declaration you can actually go on assigning a variable into another variable so how is it possible let's look at an example 
so let me assign or initialize the second var or second variable with the value with a numeric value an integer value of 1 and let's save this and we are going to assign that second var to our third var so what this is going to do is that this is going to take the value of 1 the numeric integer value of 1 and it's going to store it back to the third var it might seem that this variables these all three variables or these two variables I, I specifically mean these two variables are linked by each other but unfortunately they are not linked they are independent variables and although they store the same value they are independent in the sense that they store it in separate computer memories they allocate separate slots inside the computer memory for themselves so in here we have the first variable the second var and the third var so we have three slots three distinct uh, specifically we have three distinct slots inside our computer memory you can think of it like plots the land or um, the plots that we buy to build our houses it's going to separate inside the computer's memory like those plots and it's going to store those values so the first thing we have is a string value and it will be stored inside this first slot the second thing is the numeric value and that what is happening in here is that uh, this third var is going to take the value of one it's going to copy it and it's going to copy it inside its third slot and keep it there so now if we change this second if we change the value of the second var the value inside this third var is also going to change so let's have a look but first let us save this and view this on our browser so remember that the all javascript files are actually part of an of a complete html document so they can't run by themselves so let us check this we had already created a first code.html file and we are going to preview it in our browser so it works perfectly fine and I'm using Google Chrome here so let us look at what happens if we change the value to 5 in our second verb so let's save this and automatically we see there is a change in our program and it's going and it's displaying 5 on it so if you look carefully I have actually used the third var as the parameter inside this alert alert function which means that I have passed this third first variable inside this alert function and this alert function is printing it on the browser what happens is that this variable is actually storing a copy of this uh, value uh, retrieving retrieving a copy of this value from second var and storing it by its own self so what it's doing is that it's retrieving first and copying it to itself so every time you change it it's going to retrieve it first and then it's going to copy it inside its memory slot so all three variables are independent no matter how many variables you create in the process of making a web application your variables keep on being independent and they allocate um, space um, space inside your computer's memory